In this video, I'm going to share how I approach creating this figurative work, titled Allegory of the Flesh. Stick around to the end of this video to see more of the process that went into creating this painting. And with that being said, let's roll the intro and jump right into this. Welcome to episode number 8 of the painting process. My name is Alex Hess, and in this episode we'll be looking at how I approach creating this painting, titled Allegory of the Flesh. For this painting I will use an Italian Renaissance technique called Verdaccio. The term Verdaccio simplified is just an underpainting of the complementary green, and as you will see in the process when starting this painting it looked quite a bit different than some of my others but it ends up giving a really nice aesthetic to the overall painting. And all in all, I was really thrilled with the end results to this piece, and I think the painting has a lot to learn from. And before we start, if you're new to my channel, the goal of this series, the painting process, is for me to share footage and insiders on my process to achieving a sophisticated realism using acrylic paint. However, it's not limited to, so if you're an oil painter, a lot of the same techniques and process can be applied similarly. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And you can always find me on social media, at Alex Hess Artist. And now let's get started looking at the process that went into creating this painting. For this painting, my palette will consist of titanium white, yellow ochre, cadmium red light, Burnt Umber, Theo Green, Ultramarine Blue, Carbon Black, plus an N7 Neutral Gray. Now I'm starting this video off right from the underpainting because this is a key segment of what I was discussing earlier in the video. For this I'm using a technique called Verdaccio, and I'm basically just using Paleo Green, which typically I've seen it done with terra verde green, but I wanted a bit more cool tones than that, so I shifted the green a bit and used paleo green for this underpainting. And this was actually the first time I tried this technique, and I was a bit intimidated starting this painting just because I'm not used to making everything green at first. Usually I start with some sort of umber for the underpainting. But as you can see throughout this underpainting I just continue to build value up and often I see people make the underpainting super duper tight. And from my experience, a lot of the time, you need to put in the paint thick to get the vibrancy anyways. I don't mean super thick, but you do want the paint thick enough to where it actually gets the full hue of the color you're using. So on even some of the more delicate spots on this underpainting, I'm just kind of thinning out the paleo green. I'm not even changing, I'm not mixing anything. It's just straight out of the tube for this. And now I'm enforcing where I know the highlights will be in this painting. This is actually a great way to start because if you put that layer of highlights in, and I'm using titanium white for this, it'll really help those highlights pop on the final painting.
And now it's time to jump right into the background. As always, I usually like to work background to foreground, and I'm starting from dark and I'll work my way up to the light. And the nice thing with using that cool paleo green for the underpainting is I'm able to get a bit of those shadow values a bit more sophisticated by just thinly using those darks. And now I know that there's foliage behind the two figures and for that I'm desaturating a bit more so I can get those contrasts of the paleo green to the background and then some of those more desaturated tones up to the foreground. And often foliage like this is a lot like hair. People start trying to paint in every little individual piece but really the key is is to unfocus your eyes a bit and just look at the overall value because as you'll see with this painting as this foliage progresses I'm not really too concerned about if things don't look right from the start because I know I'll be able to keep working them and bring what I want into focus. So now with the rocks on the edge, since this is closer to the foreground, I did want to bring these into more focus than the background. And that's a good way because often that's usually how the eye even perceives things. Closer to you should be sharper in focus, further away should be less in focus. So with these rocks, I'm just getting a basic block in and I'm not too concerned about detail in the rocks and paying attention to every little thing. And now with the background pretty much complete, I'm starting to work in those flesh tones. And I'm starting the flesh a bit thinner so I can get some of those green tones in the shadow. And as you'll see with this, where I blocked out some of those highlights right from the start, it really helps push some of those values forward. And when I started blocking in this flesh, I wasn't too concerned about getting every single value correct in terms of darks and lights. Because as always, if you start with a reduced value scale, you'll be able to go brighter and lighter as the painting continues down. So I always think it's most important for faces or portraits to really keep the painting pretty tight the whole way through. because. Faces are so delicate and you'll be able to notice any little thing if it's off by a fraction. Now this was something I found pretty interesting with this technique because Verdaccio is working on the complementary opposite of red. So the green underpainting is actually creating harmony with the red tone. And with the red drapery it was kind of interesting because in the shadows, I was able to get a bit of those green hues just popping through a bit, and I think it gave a really nice impression and dynamic to the reds. And I think it's always good, even for places like this in the painting is not to get too concerned about every little stroke.
And now I'm starting to refine the overall painting, not just specifically the flesh, but I'm looking at some of the spots that could use better worked out, such as the legs here, or even some of the shadows in between the legs. And I'll do that by just continuing to build up those values and get more accurate. For this painting, I had mixed a color string, which is basically just pre-mixed colors that I knew that was going to work for the flesh. And I think this is a great practice because it allows you to have on hand something much closer to the colors that you'll actually be using. I wanted to give a deeper insight on my thought process behind creating this painting and the benefits of using the Verdaccio technique. Verdaccio essentially works by creating color harmony within the flesh tones. Because most flesh tones sit in the red and pink hues, the green underpainting works on the opposite harmonic complement of green. I think this technique really gave an interesting feel to the overall painting. I was able to utilize the greens, especially in the shadows, as it helped give that almost pearl-like coloring in the flesh. And hopefully this helped better explain the technique and with that being said, let's see the final layers of this painting come to life. Now at this point, I call this the detail layers, or you can think of it as almost the end of the painting. This is where some of those highlights that really create form start coming in, and then some of the deepest shadows start also enforcing some of the darks throughout the painting. And you'll just continue to see this get more and more in focus as I keep working those values. And I'm even putting in some glazes at this point, just getting a bit more dynamic in the overall color. And this isn't a huge painting, so some of those small details like in the hands, something to really pay attention to. And especially on a painting that's not too big, you have to really pay attention to those value changes. And I just decide to throw this into the video because I think this is always always a great part to a painting is after you've worked the whole way up to get the painting complete, now it's time to put your name on it and move on to the next one.
I wanted to say thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back in a prompt manner. And if you like this type of content, show an artist some support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. I'll try to keep posting new video content onto YouTube, but you can always see more of my work at alex-hess.com or social media at alexhess underscore artist. I hope to see you guys in the next video, and until then, goodbye.